Church, if you are there, I said, praise the Lord. Turn to the person by your side and say, there is hope. Say that again. Your trust in his love. And I know there is hope. There's hope for me. There is hope for me. There is hope for my family. There is hope all around me. Everything that concerns you, the Lord will perfect in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this retreat. Thank you because you are offering us hope. And whatever the condition of anyone, however low, however far from hope at this time, Lord, I pray, even from tonight, let there be hope in every life in Jesus' name. All the things that are broken down in any life, mend them, repair them, reconstruct them in Jesus' name. And whatever the fears and whatever the problems anyone has brought, I pray, Lord, tonight, you turn everything around for the better in Jesus' name. Everyone, without exception, among us here in the adult church, in the youth church, in the campus church, and in the children church, and in all over the nation, and beyond this nation, all over Africa and beyond, where we are gathered together, connected together, for this hope you have sent unto us. Lord, I pray, nobody will miss your blessing in Jesus' name. Miracles unprecedented. Miracles unknown. Things we have never seen and things we have never heard. Do it for every life in Jesus' name. And perfect your work in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. There is hope. In Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm reading from verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. In verse 2 it says, And it caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And ye shall live. And everything in you, everything in your family, everything around you will come alive in Jesus' name. And I will lay sinews upon you. I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking. And the bones came together. And your bones came together. Yeah. And members of your family come together. Yeah. And everything in your life that has been scattered, everything will come together. Yeah. Bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. And the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. There will be no lack. There will be no loss. There will be no limitation. 
whatever you've got, the Lord will not stop with you until he has finished. Everything that ought to be supplied in your life will be supplied in Jesus' name. Verse 9, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breast, and breathe upon these lame, that they may live. I'm looking at somebody there. That he may live. That sister, the brother, that you may live. That's why we're gathered here. That's why we're having the retreat. That everything hopeless in your life will be turned around, even at this time, in Jesus' name. And even the people you are not able to bring, maybe the condition is so terrible that you think they cannot be in a crowd like this as we are praying here. Power will travel there and touch them in Jesus' name. And every expectation of your life, every desire of your life, this is a retreat for hope. And the Lord will grant you that hope in Jesus' name. But then, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they lived, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. As you look at this passage I just read to you now, it's the word coming from the Lord in heaven. And it came to Ezekiel, not just for him, it was of the people of Israel at this time. The children of Israel had oppression. And they had affliction. They had adversity. There was insecurity. There was perplexity all through the land. There was no area in their land that wasn't facing one kind of problem or the other. There was no exception. Every family was involved. No exception, the high and the low. There was insecurity everywhere. And there were so many problems. In fact, the children of Israel had lost hope. Look at verse 11. Then said he unto me, son of man, these bulls are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say. It was a common saying among them. Because of the perplexity and the problem, and because of the affliction and the adversity that surrounded them, it was a common thing among them. They say, our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. That was their understanding. That's what their experience. And as you look at our country, and as you look at every family, and as you look at all the communities we come from, you can see one hazard, another disaster happening. There is this breaking out, there's fire that broke out, and then many houses that are, are totally raised and burnt down, many cars totally raised and burnt down. On the streets, there are accidents you never thought of. And as you look at things happening in every community, it's like as God forsaking us. Are we for destruction? Is there any hope anywhere? That's what the children of Israel were asking. And the Lord said unto them, and the Lord is sending to you. And he's saying, whatever you have seen, and whatever you have felt, and whatever you have gone through until this time, the Lord is sending a message of hope to you. And your hope begins from this very night. Everything that is dry will come afresh. Everything that is dangerous, everything will be swept away. A new life, a new horizon, and a new experience will come in your life in Jesus' name. I want you to look inward, look at your life. I want you to look at what has been the circle in your life. That at the age of such and such, look at what happened. 
after that you are moving forward it appears you are moving forward in one area another area you are crying internally and it's like when will this stop and maybe nobody knows about what you are going through, but you know it, that everything appears hopeless until the word of life comes. And that word of life is coming to you tonight. And it says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. That is the beginning of things turning around in our lives. When the preachers of the word, the prophets of God, the people of God, when we don't even start with the congregation, we don't start with the audience, we don't start with the participants, we start with ourselves, those who are preaching. And the hand of the Lord is upon us, and the Spirit of God comes upon those who are ministering, the preachers, the singers, the helpers, all the servants of God. Any little thing you're doing, you understand? If this is going to be a time of refreshing, a time of manifestation, a time of the demonstration of the power of God, every one of us must experience the hand of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord being upon us. And he carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord. He carried me. It's like he bore me up. He lifted me up. It's like, you know, it's not the natural sense that we'll be using. It's not the natural wisdom we'll be having. And it's not the natural things we normally say here. The spirit of the Lord is taking over. The spirit of the Lord is taking over every retreat location this December in Jesus' name. And the Spirit will accomplish what He wants to accomplish in every retreat and in every life and in every family. And it says, He set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. And then it begins to describe the situation of the people. It begins to describe the hopelessness that He found. He said, It caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. No protection, open valley. And there is nothing that is desirable in that open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Not only dry, but very dry. But wait, that situation is not going to change. Tonight, if you believe the Lord, I said that situation is about to change. If you cooperate with the Lord tonight, that situation is about to change. All those tears, God will wipe away. All that sorrow, the Lord will take away. It will be like you were dreaming because this is going to come from heaven itself. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? They were so hopeless, humanly speaking. They were so hopeless, Ezekiel could not give a positive answer. They were so hopeless that nobody in Israel ever thought that this situation will change. Maybe in your own circle of friends, they know your condition. And they feel that this cannot change. They even think that prayer cannot change this one. They think that retreat cannot change this one. You will go back home and show yourself to them and say, what we thought cannot change, everything has changed. What is said, there's no point spending money on this scene. There's no change, no change can happen. They say there is no point going to a prayer warrior, going to a prophet, going to a preacher, going to deeper life. This thing can never change. The Lord will surprise them and the Lord will surprise you pleasantly in Jesus' name. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. God knows that your life will change. God knows that your situation will change. God knows that your destiny must change. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Here is the secret. Here is the secret. God walks out changes in every life by his word. God walks out miracles by his word. God lifts you up from where you were and brings you to a new level by his word. And so Ezekiel tell them, I'm about to make a change in their lives. But here is the number one thing they must do. Hear the word of the Lord. Thank God that's what you came for. I said that is what you came for. And as you hear the word of God, and you receive, and you accept, and you assimilate, and you meditate, and you apply it to your life, and say, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. Anything coming out of the pulpit, the word of the Lord, it is mine. As you soak yourself in the word of God, wrap yourself with the word of God, and as you totally immerse yourself in everything that you are hearing, before you know what is happening, your life has changed. Verse 5, thus says the Lord God, unto these bones I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. The one that created us originally. And after the creation, he looked at everything and he said, it is good. It is very good. That same creator, that same covenant keeping God, that same one that has all power in heaven and on earth. And he says, I am God. I change not. That same God says, I will recreate you. I will bring life unto you. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. There is faithfulness necessary in, on the part of the preachers, of the ministers, in every retreat location. If we want blessings for our people, preachers, be faithful. If we want upliftment for our people, preachers, be faithful. If we want a turning around for everyone in every retreat location, preachers, be faithful. Ezekiel said, I cannot make the dry bones to come alive, but God can. And he has given me the word, what to say. And he said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. Let the preachers do what the Lord has commanded. Miracles are going to happen in Galore. Without number, uncountable. God is not going to leave you out. You will not be an exception. And he says, as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. Disunity will be cancelled. Separation will be cancelled. Yeah, yeah, they just say amen. Bone coming together to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. And the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. We are not through until it is through. We are not finished until he has finished. We have not ended until he has ended. We will not leave until every life here is touched by the miracle power of God. Although something had happened, but more was still to come. The Lord is going to do a lot tonight. And yet tonight is not the end of the retreat. It's the beginning of a breakthrough in your life. And the beginning of light shining into your life in Jesus' name. And so please remember, please remember a great thing happening to your life tonight. And yet it's not the end. We're not through until he is through. A lot had happened, but there was no breath in them. 
Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, that's north, east, west, south. Anywhere your blessing has been hidden, they will come. As far away as the north, as far away as the east, as far away as the west, as far away as the south, anywhere your blessing, your breakthrough is being locked down, prophecy has come. They will come to you and meet you here in Jesus' name. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon this lane that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived. And you live. And we live and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. You'll be part of a great army. Part of a conquering army. Part of an army that is invincible, unconquerable in Jesus' name. From tonight, your weakness will vanish away. Your doubts will vanish away. Your problems will evaporate in Jesus' name. Hope for dry bones. Three things we're going to look at before we pray. There's prayer tonight. I said there's prayer tonight. I was waiting for you either to say yes or amen. Three points. Number one, help for hopeless souls. Help for hopeless souls. Point number two, the heritage of humble sons. The heritage of humble sons. Point number three, the heart for a higher summit. The heart for a higher summit. Number one, Help for hopeless souls. I'm coming to Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. I read first from verse 20. In Job chapter 11, reading from verse 20. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape. Their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. That's talking about hopelessness. It says, those who are far away from God, those who have not come to God, those who say, I'll manage, I'll try, I'll turn things around myself, I don't need prayer, I don't need God, I don't need church, I don't need any promise from God, I don't need intercessor, I'll do it by myself. It says, their hope will be as the giving up of the ghost. As if, okay, that's final, hopeless. But how can we receive help? How can we turn things around? Verse 13, verse 13, if thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thy hands toward him, prepare your heart Stretch out your hand towards him as you come to this retreat. You need something in your life. Am I right? Don't act as if you just came, spectator, onlooker, only at the clapping corner. For those who are getting something, make up your mind. It says, if you want to turn that hopeless condition around, it says, prepare thine heart. Look into your life and look at your heart. What have I been doing far away from church? What have I been doing all by myself? 
that is not acceptable in the sight of God. Prepare your heart. Verse 14. If iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. Don't just uh, say, okay, we're praying. Before we pray, check up. God calls that iniquity. God calls that sin. God calls that evil. And it has been in your hand. Yes, you had your reason for doing them. I do this so I can get this. I know it's bad. I know it's bad. But so I can get this. I go this way so I can get something from that man. I go that way so I can receive some pleasure for myself. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. But I have my reason. It says, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. Let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then, here is hope. I said here is hope. Somebody there, I said here is hope. For then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. He will forgive you. He will justify you. He will save you. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shall not fear. Every form of fear will vanish out of your life. Because thou shalt forget thy misery. I will forget my misery. You'll forget your sorrow. It will be as something that passes away, water passing away under the bridge. Congratulations tonight, it's happening in your life. And remember it as waters that pass away. And thine age shall be clearer than the known day. Thine age shall be clearer than the known day. If you look at the day from morning till noon till night, the noon day that is at noon, that's the brightest, that's the clearest. And everything is so clear. And God is saying, you're coming out of darkness. You're coming into the light. And your life, your age will be clear as noon day, even clearer than the noon day. Every sickness in your body will vanish away. All the weaknesses in your life will vanish away. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt shine forth. You see there? Thou shalt shine forth. And thou shalt be as the morning. You'll be as fresh as the morning. And thou shalt be secure. Insecurity will vanish away. Because, verse 18, because, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Amen. Matthew chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 15. Reading from verse 21. Here was a woman. It appeared there was no hope. Maybe this is your story about yourself, about your family, about your place of work. About the people you love much. Look at it. Matthew chapter 15 verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, the woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. She had a daughter, and the daughter had mental challenge, and the evil spirit tormented that daughter, tearing that daughter apart, and that woman could not bear it, had gone different places, there was no solution. That's what you call hopelessness. 
and but he answered her not a word the lord was testing her whether she will stay or she will say he's not even answering me let me go you will not go without your miracle you will not go without the answer have for be god your answer is on the way and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. Disciples, those were members of Christ's team. We'll call them the first church. They were part of the church, and this woman was crying after the Lord Jesus. Instead of being a gateway to Christ, they became a stumbling block against the woman. And they told Jesus, send her away, for she's crying after us. I pray you'll not be a stumbling block. You know, there are people who have never been in a camp like this. They've been in other camps, but have not been in this particular place uh, before. And they may not know their way to that place, to that place, to that place. And they may not look like you expect them to look. And they may not pray like you expect them to pray. And then if you talk to them in a way that drives them off, you become a stumbling block. I will not be a stumbling block. In your attitude, in your conduct, in your character, understand. There are women like this, there are men like this. They've come with sorrow in their hearts. They've come for, with challenges in their lives. And you want to do everything you can do. And you want to understand the problems different people might have. And because of that, you want to stretch out a helping hand, a loving hand a receptive hand something that will turn the situation of their lives just a little smile might confirm the miracle that's on the way already so don't be a hindrance you will be a help i will be a help i can't hear my people Verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Help for the hopeless. And God has that help here waiting for you. It will help you. You don't know how to pray, it will help you. You don't know how to repent, it will help you. You don't have to get blessing, it will help you. Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. It is, you know, when the testing comes to you, the Lord does not say, Testing, testing, testing. One, two, one, two. A dog, a pig, it's a test. And she passed the test. In this retreat, every temptation that comes your way, you'll overcome. Every test that comes your way, you'll overcome. Test of discouragement and test of giving up and the test of saying, how could they talk like that? What are you preaching like that? All those things that come in your mind, all those things we will overcome in Jesus' name. Verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord. She still called him Lord. She wasn't offended. Whatever you hear, the Lord is expecting to come. That you will make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, the director of your life. That you will say, I know I've gone astray. I know I've not been the perfect person uh, in the world that I could be. I know that I've not been my best every minute, every moment, every day throughout my life. And then you come to the Lord and say, Lord, take over my life and be the Lord of my life. Then uh, your life will turn around. 
Look at this in verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Your perseverance will prove your faith. Your praying will prove your faith. Your passion, I will not be denied. My situation must turn around. I forget every other thing and I remember the Lord my God. I am going to be blessed. Your perseverance will prove your faith. O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Whatever you want, it will be done. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. When is your own hour? This very hour. I say, when is your own hour? This very hour, the Lord will turn things around in Jesus' name. As it is for the women, so it is for the men. Look at Mark chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 17. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son which has a dumb spirit. Have you noticed the other story I read to you? A woman with a daughter. Now the one I'm reading to you, a man with a son. And wheresoever he taketh him, he cheereth him, and he foameth, and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I speak to thy disciples, that they should cast him out, and they could not, hopelessness. And they could not, we've tried everything. Then he answered and, uh, and said, O faceless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Bring him unto me you will get to Jesus. And once you get to Jesus, final, it will be done. I said it will be done. And they brought him unto him. And when you saw him straightway, the spirit cheered him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. Whatever you see, whatever you feel in your body, don't worry. The devil knows it's going out. So that's why he's saying, this is my last chance. This is my last chance. Because now you come in the presence of Jesus, hopelessness will vanish away. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And all times it cast him into the fire and into the waters, plural, to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus says unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Any believer there tonight? All things are possible. I said, any believer there tonight? All things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. There is help for hopeless souls. When Jesus saw the people running, came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, Come out of him and enter no more into him. The miracle you receive tonight in this retreat will be permanent. And the spirit cried and read him so and came out of him and came out of him. 
And he was as one dead. No, he cannot be dead in the presence of Jesus who is life and resurrection. In as much as many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And he arose. Your own change has come. First Chronicles chapter 4. I've read to you the story of a hopeless woman. Everything changed. I've read to you the story of a hopeless man. And the whole thing changed. I'm coming now to First Chronicles chapter 4. And I'm reading from verses 9 and 10. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Here is a child now. Whether you're a child, a teenager, a youth, a father, a mother, young adult, hopeless situations must change tonight. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him for sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. He answered Jabez, he will answer you. Saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. One. Number two. And enlarge my coast. Number three that thine hand might be with me. Number four, that thou wouldest keep me from evil. Number five, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. It's done. In whose life? I said in whose life? In your life, it is done. Darkness is gone. Hopelessness is gone. And all the sorrow, everything is gone in Jesus' name. I believe God. It shall be. I thought you would say it. It shall be. Even as you are being told. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Reading from verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, and all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Hopelessness. All hope that we should be delivered was taken away. All hope that we should ever come to safety, everything vanished away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have akined unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Hope is coming. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. What's your name? Fear not. Are you ashamed of your name? Put your name instead of Paul there. Fear not. There's nothing for you to fear. Behind the screen, behind the curtain, behind anywhere, whatever conspiracy of people in the forest, in the sea, in the air, in the bush, fear not. You didn't put your name. Fear not. You will not fear. Tonight is the beginning of a new thing in your life. 
You don't worry about that situation. The problem is solved. Fear not, Paul, that must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. It shall be. Salvation in your life, it shall be. Restoration in your life, it shall be. Hope in your life, it shall be. Joy in your life, it shall be. It turning around in your life, it shall be. Progress in your life, it shall be. Point number two, Second Chronicles chapter 7. The heritage of humble sons. The heritage of humble sons. We're coming to Second Chronicles chapter 7. I read from verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Reading from verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall do what? Tell me now. Say it aloud. You see, there are people they don't understand. They say, let God come and humble me. That's not more humility. When that humble, humbleness, allow me to use that word, comes from outside, that is humiliation. God will not humiliate you. Your neighbor will not humiliate you. No member of the church will humiliate you. Your boss in the place of work will not humiliate you. When somebody has to do something to make you humble, to bring you down, to talk you down, and to belittle you, that's humiliation. No humiliation in your life in Jesus' name. It is you yourself understanding the greatest of blessings come to the people who are humble in the sight of God. And so he said, my people, don't wait for another person to pull you down and to bring you to the dust and to humiliate you. Humble yourself. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. And what's the next word? Pray. We pray because we're humble. I cannot help myself. I pray. Everything I can do will not save me. That's humility. So I pray. All my good works are like filthy rags. And they amount to nothing in the sight of God. So I pray. He is the only one that can save. My good works cannot save me. My churchianity cannot save me. My religion cannot save me. My profession cannot save me. Only thou and thou alone can save. He says, humble themselves and pray. And seek my face. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. If you're humble tonight, God will hear from heaven. If you pray in humility tonight, God will hear from heaven. If you seek the face of the Lord tonight, God will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sin. He will forgive you. And I will heal their land. It will heal you in Jesus' name. Let me show you one man here. He was the most wicked person in the history of his own family. And yet, look at what happened. Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 12. 
And when he was in affliction, hopelessness, hopelessness, he besought the Lord his God. He besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly. Humbled himself greatly before God, the God of his fathers. And he prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him. The Lord will answer your prayer. And heard his supplication. And brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord he is God. Your own time has come. Micah chapter 6. Reading from verse 2. Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 2. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy. And ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people. And he will plead with Israel, O my people, what have I done unto thee? The Lord had a controversy with the children of Israel. He had blessed them. He had brought them out of captivity. He had provided for them. He had done for them what he had not even done for all the nations. And yet, they didn't respond to God the way he wanted their response. That's why I said, oh my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee, testify against me. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Begin to count the blessings that God has given you. You are not even worthy of those blessings. It's not because of wisdom. The people are as wise as you are, and they have not got what you have got. It's not because of your ability there are people that have the same ability greater ability and yet they've not gotten what you've got and he says i brought thee up out of the land of egypt i redeemed you out of the hand of, of, of servants and i sent before you moses aaron miriam oh my people remember now what bela king of moab consulted and what Balaam, the son of Baal, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? They say, okay, you blessed us. You protected us. You provided for us. And you have enriched our lives more than you have done for any other people, any other nation. What shall we do now? Wherewith shall I come before the Lord? Look at verse 8. He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly. To love mercy and to walk, tell me, humbly with thy God. That's what he expects. And as a great heritage, a great blessing for the people that will humble themselves in the sight of the Lord. Luke chapter 15. In Luke chapter 15, verse 17. Luke 15, verse 17. And when he came to himself, that's the first thing. You want your life to change. He came to himself. He was not himself before. He was thinking out of himself. Out of senses, out of spirituality, out of humility, out of what is acceptable in the sight of the Lord. 
That's why he went to the far country. But now, having lost everything, hopelessness set in. Now he came to himself. He said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise. Humility, I will pray. I will seek the face of the Lord. I will turn from my evil way. I will arise and go to my father. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned. You know, it's pride that says, I'm okay. I'm not as bad as other people. I'm righteous. Yes, conditions have changed. It's the economy. It's not because I'm bad. It's the economy of the world. It's the economy in Africa. It's the economy in our nation. That's why things are down. And things will change. Things will change. They'll be looking. He didn't say that. He knew it was a sin that brought that upon his life. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy. That's humility. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Verse 20. And he arose. Intention without action is nothing. I will arise. That's intention. I will say unto him. That's intention. I will say I have seen. That's just planning. Intention. But now he took action. You will take action tonight. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? You will take action tonight. God will change this hopeless situation in your life. And he arose in verse 20 and he came to his father. He didn't go to his elder brother. He went to the one he offended. We have offended God. We have sinned against God. We have not lived as righteous as we know to live, as he has been teaching us. Our knowledge is higher than our action. He wants righteousness. You know it. He wants holiness. You know it. He wants humility. You know it. We know more than we practice. And that's what the man now is saying. He went to his father. And what? But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. God will see you tonight. And had compassion on him. God will have compassion on you and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. This confession, you can see this, clear, transparent, honest, truthful confession. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Total forgiveness tonight. Total freedom tonight. And after that freedom and forgiveness, you will not go back to the far country anymore in Jesus' name. But his father, verse 22, said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted cow and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, hopelessly dead, spiritually dead helplessly dead. This my son was dead 
and is alive again. Hope has been revived. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Heaven will rejoice because of you today. Heaven will rejoice and see because you turn to the Lord. There will be joy in the presence of God in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7 of that same chapter 15, verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons that need no repentance. Verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. As you come to the Lord in all humility tonight, He will answer your prayer. He will say, He will sanctify, He will baptize in the Holy Ghost, He will heal, He will bless, He will restore, He will lift you up higher. Somebody give me the word higher. Let me hear you again. Higher. This retreat will bring a higher hope in your life. Higher inheritance in your life. Higher possession in your life. Point number three, the heart for a higher summit. The mind for a higher summit. The passion, the desire, the pursuit of a higher summit. We're looking at Psalm 61. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed, when there's hopelessness, when I'm in the woods and I don't know which way to turn to come out of my predicament, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I want you to look at your life. If you are at the very lowest bottom, you're praying to the Lord, Lord, I'm in this dungeon. I don't know I can dig up myself, lift up myself, but lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Maybe you're backsliding and you know it. People don't know. But you know that in your private life, you're falling and you cannot have the victory. You're telling the Lord, I need to be lifted higher. I need restoration. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Maybe you are saved. There's some people that give testimonies all through 20, 30 years. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. They have not compared themselves with Enoch in the Bible, Elijah in the Bible, Elisha in the Bible, Paul in the Bible, John, Peter in the Bible. They stay at that first experience, salvation, salvation. But today you are telling the Lord you will come higher. I can't hear the amen. amen. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's why Jesus is our sanctifier, cleansing us from self and sin. And with all the Spirit's fullness, filling all our hearts within. You're saved, you're sanctified. 
A retreat like this is to make you have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. And Jesus is her power. He is the gift of Pentecost. Jesus breathes on us. The power of the Holy Ghost. It will be tonight. Because you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Yours is the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to many that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And after that baptism in the Holy Ghost, you understand, there are gifts of the Spirit so that your life will not be shallow, ordinary, empty. There are gifts of the Spirit available. He wants you to desire that. He doesn't want to just be doing a merry-go-round in your Christian life. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Maybe you are saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost but you're not strong in your body you're carrying your body as if you're in your 90s even though you're in, the, you're in your 50s this one is strong with the head that one is strong with the spine that one is strong with the kidney the other thing is wrong with the levers. Something is wrong with you know internal something and you, there's this and there's this and there's that and if the spirit had raised up Jesus Christ, dwell in your mortal body. Tonight, it will quicken your mortal body. You'll not only have healing, you will have health in Jesus' name. You're a believer, but you don't sleep well. When you sleep at night, no matter how good and comfortable that place is where you're sleeping, you have some nightmares. And you have things, you know, it's like they're coming to press you on the bed. It's like something happening. You want to change when you are in that dream far away. And then eventually while sweating and shouting and all that, you wake up. That's not the path of victory. Everything must change during this retreat. Everything and anything that has overwhelmed your life, you are telling the Lord... Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. It will happen. I said it will happen. But you are going to do something. You'll forget everything around you. Forget everyone around you. And you let there be a good channel between earth and heaven. That you're not thinking of anybody. You are not bothered by anybody. You are not bothered by whatever anybody may say or do or how they may pray. Your heart is concentrating and you say, that higher point I'm going to get tonight. That hope I'm going to have tonight. This problem must be resolved tonight. Forget everything around and just center your focus on the Almighty God. A breakthrough must come for you tonight. Psalm 42, from verse 1. Psalm 42, verse 1. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? I come, I come to appear before God. The power that will break every chain, destroy all the shackles in your life, is waiting for you right now. Psalm 62. I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 62. Verse 11, God 
has spoken once. Twice have I had this, the power belongs unto God. The power to solve your problem belongs unto God. The power to save your soul belongs unto God. The power to give you total restoration belongs unto God. The power to make you transparently clean and righteous in the sight of the Lord belongs unto God. The power to break every yoke and to destroy all the works of the devil, even when you are standing or sitting there tonight, that power belongs to God. The power for total transformation, that power belongs to God. You will see it. Psalm 63, verse 1. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power. To see thy power. Somebody help me shout to see thy power. Is that your mind? Is that your heart? Is that your desire? Answer me. Is that your passion? To see thy power. If that is your passion, you will act as if you are hearing the word of God for the first time. You will act as if you are the only one here and God is for you. And God says that power is available and will break every yoke and destroy all the works of the devil. And you will say, if any miracle ever happened to anybody in this retreat, it will happen to me. It will happen to me to see thy power and thy glory. So, as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, you will see the Lord. Verse 8, my soul follows hard after thee. I'm not praying and looking here and there. I'm not praying and then looking at something, looking at somebody. I'm not praying and then thinking of, you know, something near, something far away. My soul follows hard after thee. Nothing between you and God tonight. Anything that tries to come in between you and God, you'll pull it away and drive it away in Jesus' name. My soul followeth hand after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. It will uphold you. If you are falling, it will raise you up. If your life has become ordinary, it will become extraordinary. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. If you are going to have peace, God said, I'm waiting for you. Open your mouth, I'll give you that peace. Rest in your soul. All the turmoil will vanish away. Confusion will vanish away. You hear the voice of the Lord clearly. I have forgiven your sin. I've given you peace. I've given you a new life. Because he says, for I know the thoughts which I think toward you. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace. No confusion, thoughts of peace. No conflict, thoughts of peace. No battle, thoughts of peace. No oppression, Thoughts of peace. No fright, fearfulness. Thoughts of peace. Not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me. And I will hack in unto you. And ye shall seek me. And shall find me. 
When? Tell me. When? When? Ye shall search for me with all your heart. No reservation. You come to the Lord and you say, Lord, with all my heart, I'm crying unto you. I'm calling unto you. And without any reservation, Lord, I come. Answer me. Your answer will come speedily. Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. So to yourselves in righteousness. Take sin away. Take unrighteousness away. Take iniquity away. Take evil away. Take everything contrary to the will of God, contrary to the word of God. Take that away. So to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. You are going to reap mercy today. Break up your fallow ground. If your heart appears hard, the word never penetrates. The word never gets to you, never gets at you. The word never enters into you. Whatever you hear on this glorious day of the gate of his power being opened unto us and it says in time yet your heart is still as dull as it was and you say well that's just me the Lord is saying break it up break it up break up your fallow ground that hardness of heart reject it that dullness of heart reject it and that ear that is dull of hearing reject it Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Till he come and rain holiness upon you. Till he come and rain mercy upon you. Till he come and rain miracles upon you. I thought the church would say amen. Till it come and rain transformation upon you. Till it come and rain breakthrough upon you. Till it come and rain heaven's heritage, heaven's inheritance, and your possession upon you in Jesus' name. Tonight, a great thing will begin to happen in your life. Tonight, all the darkness will begin to vanish away. Tonight, all the hardness of heart will begin to vanish away. Tonight, all the hopelessness of your life will begin to vanish away. Heaven is opened right now. You are coming higher today. You are going higher today. You are seeking the Lord in a higher way today. And from this very beginning of the retreat, great, great, great manifestation of the mercy of God is coming upon you tonight. Are you there? What are you? Are you going to pray? And you will pray as if there's no other person there. Rise up now, rise up now, rise up now. It's time to seek the Lord. It's time to call upon the name of the Lord. It's time to tell God your condition, hopeless, your condition, helpless, your condition dry, your condition weak, your condition unrighteous, your condition only at the minimum level of the Christian life, but then you are telling the Lord, lead me higher, lead me higher, lead me higher, lead me higher, higher Lord, higher Lord, higher Lord. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I am here. It's the beginning of a breakthrough. It's the beginning of total salvation. It's the beginning of total forgiveness. It's the beginning of total freedom. It's the beginning of total breakthrough. Tell the Lord. A retreat like no other retreat. A praying time as no other praying time. A revival time as no other revival time. 
higher. If you're down on the ground, let him lift you up. He'll forgive you. Present yourself before him. Pray like you have never prayed. Seek him like you have never sought him. Believe like you have never believed. Understand this is the hour like you never understood. Pray as if you are the only one there. Pray as if God is concentrating on you, on you alone. Pray as if this salvation must be real. Pray as if this forgiveness was definite. Pray as if that freedom from sin must be a personal, definite experience today. No more falling and rising. Free. Tell the Lord tonight. Salvation that is real. Salvation that gives you victory over sin. Salvation that makes you a new creature in Christ. Salvation that overcomes all the tradition of society. All the tradition of denominations. Salvation that links you up to God directly. Salvation that gives you a righteous heart. A righteous life. A life without sin. A life without sinning. Let him lift you higher. You've got salvation before. What kind of salvation is that? The salvation that is still sinning. Salvation that is still lying. Salvation that is still unrighteous. Come higher. Come higher. Come higher. The blood of Jesus will wash you whiter than snow. Go and sin no more. That's the salvation he gives. Sin no more, lest a worse sin come on thee. That's salvation he gives. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. That's the salvation he gives. Behold the Lamb of God that take away, taketh away the sin of the world. That's the salvation he gives. Awake to righteousness and sin not. That's the salvation he gives. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. That's the salvation he gives. But he keeps himself so that that wicked one touches him not. That's the salvation he gives. Come up higher. Come up higher. Salvation sets us free from sin. Higher. Higher. He sanctifies. He that sanctifies. And they who are sanctified of all of one. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That he might sanctify them. For the cleansing of water by the word. That they may be a glorious church. No spot, no wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, it sanctifies. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, it sanctifies. And accept your righteousness, shall exceed, shall go beyond. Shall go deeper than the righteousness of scribes and the Pharisees. He shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. He sanctifies. And every man that has this hope in him 
purifies himself, even as Christ is pure, he sanctifies. Cleanse yourself from all the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, he sanctifies. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. He sanctifies. Come higher, tell the Lord. He saves, gives us victory over sin, power over sin. So that the things that defeated you before will not defeat you anymore. Tell the Lord, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. When my heart is overwhelmed within me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's power. The power of the Holy Ghost. They shall receive power. No fear. Power. Not weakness, power. Not cowardice, power. Not trembling, power. Not timidity, you shall receive power. After that you have received the Holy Ghost, and you'll be a bold witness, a courageous witness, a conquering witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Power, the power of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? The spirit of power have you received? The spirit of fearlessness have you received? The spirit of the conqueror have you received? That same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead have you received? Lord, lead me higher. Lord, lead me higher. Lord, lead me higher. By stripes you are healed. He bore a chastisement, a pains, a griefs, our iniquities, our infirmities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. With his stripes we are healed. He heals all sicknesses. They brought unto him in the evening, and he cast them at his feet, the lame, the blind, the deaf, everyone, and he sent out his word, and he healed every one of them. Lord, take me higher, heal me. Deliver me. Set me free. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me and has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up their wounds, and to mend all those that have broken lives. And he says, this day is that fulfilled in your ears. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they cast out devils. They take up serpents and cast them away. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They'll speak with new tongues. They lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those promises are yours and they are still true today. 
Lord, do something, do something, do something. Higher than what I ever had. Higher than what I ever got. Lord, do something in my life tonight. Take me higher. Take me higher. Take me higher. He will do it. Believe tonight. If that can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Restoration, yes. Salvation, yes. Freedom, yes. Dominion, yes. Holiness, yes. Sanctification, yes. Holy Ghost power, immersion in the Holy Ghost, yes. A new strength, a new power, a new spiritual energy, yes. Healing. Health, deliverance, dominion, yes. Protection, provision. Tell the Lord, lead me higher, lead me higher, lead me higher, lead me higher. Higher than I've ever been, higher than I've ever known. Higher than I've ever experienced. Lord, lead me high. Lead me high. Lead me higher. Let there be assurance in my heart. The Spirit bearing witness with your heart. That all your sins are forgiven. Pray, pray, pray until the Spirit is bearing witness in your heart. That now your sins are forgiven. Now you've got a new life. Now you've got the grace. The grace to go and see no more. And you will not go back to your vomit anymore. Let the spirit bear witness in your heart. It is done. Your healing. Let the spirit confirm it. It is done. Freedom, dominion, let the spirit confirm in your heart, it is done. Victory, triumph, authority, dominion, let the spirit confirm in your heart, it is done. Sanctification, holiness. Let the Spirit confirm it in your heart that you are not just like you were before. A new experience has come. A new victory has come. A new triumph has come. A new dominion has come. Let the Spirit confirm it. Now for you, it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing people of God said, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because of the promises you have given. You are faithful God. You are merciful God. You are covenant-keeping God. You have not changed. You said when we come, and we seek you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. That you are going to answer. We believe. I believe. Your people believe. You have answered in Jesus' name. 
salvation for those who have confessed their sins and have called upon you. Confirm that salvation in Jesus' name. Restoration for those who have gone away and have come back. They have come to themselves and have called upon you in all sincerity. Receive them. Restore them. Set them free. Every yoke of sin break from their lives in Jesus' name. You sanctify. You purify. Lord, I pray, make your people sanctified, holy, purified in Jesus' name. You promised to us he shall receive power. We're fed up with lives of weakness, lives of timidity, and the lives of trembling before men and before demons. Lord, I pray, power from on high. Power from on high. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power with dominion. Power with evidence. Let it come on the sanctified in Jesus' name. Lord, we're members of the body of Christ. You were not sick when you were here on earth. Members of your body must not be carrying sickness about. In this audience tonight, and in all the places that we are praying together right now, we reject sickness in every form. We reject infirmity in every form. We reject every work of Satan in every form. Send forth your healing. Heal your people in Jesus' name. Every miracle of healing that your people need, touch them right now. Heal them right now. Let them experience it now in Jesus' name. Lord, you say you'll give us the victory. You make us more than conquerors. Enough of running around and running away from the enemy. We are the conquerors. We are more than conquerors. In the day and in the night. In the dream and in reality. Make everyone more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Make us triumph. Make us overcome. Lord, I pray for everyone. I pray every request they have brought before you. Answer them in Jesus' name. Your answer is given to you. Your solution has now come. Your breakthrough is yours right now. Miracle in your life. Miracle in your mouth. Miracle in your family. Breakthrough and victory for everyone. Lord, confirm it for all your people in Jesus' name.